I picked the I, I picked the uh, title I did, Macro Perspective, um, to reflect the perspective I wish to use with this presentation. My goal is to provide everyone with an overview of information that will help all our school leaders who have an understanding of what the charter school office is looking for from a finance perspective. So I'm going to briefly go over what I do, what we like to see from you, and a couple issues we have, we've had and stuff like that. First off, I'd like to say thank you to everyone in attendance for their time and service that helps improve the educational experience of children throughout Michigan. Finances aside, the ultimate goal is to provide the best education possible to the children of Michigan. So uh, I provided an overview summary of the topics I'll be speaking about. Uh, I hope everyone's got a handout. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask them at the end of the presentation um, so we can kind of keep it on timeline and get, it, get things moving. Um, the audio and video have been recorded. The audio is kind of sketchy still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there will be a wireless microphone available over there if you have questions so it will feed into the into the camera so you can hear it on the recording for when we record it. So uh, I'll, we'll have that available during the questions and answers session. So uh, this all this equipment here we just purchased. Uh, this presentation is <laughs> going to be available as, on board gear as Mike talked to everyone earlier. There's several presentations up there right now. There's one on School of Law, um, an academics one from Julia Novi. And uh, there's an older finance one that's up there right now. So uh, we want to provide this information. And uh, we'd also like your feedback. If you want anything from us, feel free to contact our office and like, email, call, and tell us you know, what, it, what you would like to hear, whether it be governance, finance, academics, law, or anything. Um, we'll, do, we'll look it up for you and get an answer for you. One of our end goals is to uh, have these available so that you can get them on your mobile device. So, so if you're like sitting at somewhere waiting for a pizza or something, you can watch part of a video or something on your phone. <laughs> so that's what we'd, we'd like to have eventually, but we're still working out all the kinks. This is our first time using all this equipment. We just got it a couple weeks ago, so sorry about the microphone issue. So uh, this is a picture of the board here. If, I don't know, hopefully everyone's been there by now. Um, the current videos we have, you go to bmcc.edu, then you go to uh, Charter School Office tab, board gear, and this will, this is board gear, the main thing. You click the video communica communications tab, and then this is what you'll find right here, and then here's the videos over here that we have. So all our videos will be uploaded that way. So, uh, and then all the, all the URLs I've used throughout this presentation, I have them at the end, so there's like a list. So um, if you're wondering, where, where do I find this site? It's going to be at the end of the presentation. So, um, our, again, our stuff's a work in progress. So we're going to constantly be trying to improve stuff and update stuff as laws come out. And uh, hopefully, we can provide everything that you want. So, okay, this list represents the deadlines associated with paper vision. So hopefully, we all know paper vision is the means that we submit all our documents. So. Um, this is a list of all the financial, this isn't all of them, this is the financial list. So uh, I would like to note that this is the audited financial statements that everyone gets done annually and it's October 30th. The states is like November 14th or 15th, so it's actually two weeks earlier than that, approximately. So that's something to uh, take into consideration. Um, and then each of these dates up here, I've created like a spreadsheet. I go in and enter the dates that they were submitted from Paper Vision and then it will automatically tell me if they were in compliance or not in compliance. So I am tracking it. So that's something to keep in mind. And if there's any questions about any date or if there's an issue, you can contact me and we'll deal with it accordingly. So, and then uh, certificate of insurance, that's the only one that doesn't have like a definite date because all the schools have different dates where they, where they expire. So just try to make sure that that's uploaded 30 days before your current policy expires. So uh, I have had a couple issues when I'm looking through the documents. Um, sometimes the actual document isn't there. There's a there's a just a piece of paper that says it's available on the school's website. Um, that's not really considered in compliance. We want the actual document. So if the if the, if it's a quarterly statement, we want the actual quarterly statement uploaded to Paper Vision, not a piece of paper that says it's available on the website. The reason is is because um, when we go back to like back and if we if we go in time and then we go back to look for it 
if it's been updated on the website, we want it to be we want it to be on our system as well. So as an authorizer, we'd like that to be on our system. So that's the reason for that. Okay, next, um, I chose an example from one of our budgets um, from one of our academies. Uh, this one, if you can see it good enough. Uh, I chose this one because I liked all the headings, the revenue. They did the audited fiscal year 11, and then the original budget, and then the first amended budget. So the layout of this one is really good. It, it shows a lot of shows a lot of good information. It's really consistent with the annual audit, so it's really good for comparative purposes between all that stuff. So I don't know. I I haven't like, you know, looked through compared each format, but this is some. This is a good idea. Of, if yours isn't like this, and you, you're looking to like improve yours a little bit, this is a good example of how how you should list your quarterlies. All right, and your this budget shows me fiscal year 11 total revenue and the fiscal year 11 fund balance from this slide. So the total revenue right here, and then the ending fund balance from this slide as well. So that. When you divide those two, it should come out to 0.3. In this example, we will take the budget projections that we course that correspond with that previous slide's 34%. Um, again, we want 10% for our fund balance over revenue. And as we look at this slide, we notice this negative $104,720. So that's the uh, over under. So that would be the projected fund balance for the year. And normally a drop like this, for in this example, normally a drop like this would uh, indicate some sort of financial issue with the academy. However, seeing that the last uh, slide showed that they had a balance, a balance of 1940338 which is also right here from the fiscal year 11, um, that shows that they have a lot of cash and that they're, they're able to draw down. So uh, though we want our academies to be financially stable, um, it's not at the expense of the education of the children. So as long as the, as long as the funds are being used in a, a good, sound financial reason, it's you know it's justifiable. So the one thing to keep in mind with that though is if you're going to budget a deficit, you have to actually budget the deficit. So um, you can't just you know say we're going to spend this money, but we're not going to budget it because if you're over by like one percent, you know it's going to be kind of a an indicator that something's you gotta want to keep on top of your budget. So, so this slide is just to show that the drop went from 34 percent to 32 percent. So the fund balance over revenues from that previous slide. After this drop, so we were at here, we lost this amount. The percentage of fund balance over revenue went from 34 percent to 32 percent. Which is about the financials. These headings are some good headings to keep in mind for um, for your quarterly financials. This is like the function number, so this is how you label all your your uh, your numbers associated with each fund type. This description is just like a description. You know, this is the food fund, food, you know, stuff like that. Current year to date tells you the amount per date to that current date based on whatever it is in the quarter. A revised budget is a, for comparison to year to date. The difference is the difference between these two. And the percent budget is the percent of the budget that's been used at that time. Okay, so, okay, this is kind of a, this is kind of a big thing to, uh, to the, our offices. I've created this template. This is like the top part of the first page. So this is a two page document. Um, page one represents the numbers associated with a particular year. Uh, if you can see, I got the school name, the grades, the management company. This is where the current assets, liabilities, invested in capital, and then you got some ratios, and then all the fund balances, and then the beginning and ending fund balance with all the revenues and expenditures. So this is kind of a, a really good overview of the really 450 page audit. So it's, it's a really good piece of information to pass along to the other charter school office people, to our QPR people, to our field reps so that they can have an understanding of, you know, the school's financial standing without having to look through a big audit. So I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail on this. So uh, please note the uh, general percentage section right here. Um, this is the section where the 10% we talked about earlier is located. 
This percentage is a good indicator to our office of how the academy is performing financially regardless of student enrollment level, levels and it is taken into consideration during the renewal process. As shown earlier, the percentage is computed by divided the general fund balance, so that fiscal year 11 fund balance, ending fund balance that was audited, and then the total revenues from the audit, and then multiplying it by 100 to create a percentage. So, uh, so here's, that's it right there, the general fund over the revenues to give us that percentage. So here's all the details that I just read out, so it should be right on your sheet that you have. Um, also, there's another one we use, it's general fund minus restricted funds over revenue times 100. And the reason we do that one is restricted funds are kind of, they're, they're pretty much the debt service. So if there's debt service, sinking funds, that kind of thing, this kind of gives us a better idea of um, how liquid your funds are when you subtract that, that amount from it. So next, uh, I'll deal with the fund classifications. These are the current classifications as they are expressed on the review document. These classifications were changed as recently as last year and may not be fully understood by everyone. The classification data for each fund type should be available in the written portion of your annual audit. So when you get your annual audit, there'll be like a written portion in the back. You can go back there and read these again. They'll, they'll be more, more in depth, but I'm gonna give you a, kind of a little brief overview of what they are. So this is what it used to be labeled like two years ago. It used to be unreserved fund balance and then reserved fund balance. The unreserved just means that the money wasn't really, you could use it for anything. It wasn't reserved for anything, whereas reserved was reserved for a debt service, whatever. And it's kind of been broken down into these five classifications down here. And there was sometimes designated, and that was kind of what assigned is now. So um, here's the definitions. So non-spendable is classified as anything legally or contractually required to be maintained. Some examples of that is your inventory, your prepaid, your non-current receipt, your non-current receivables, that kind of thing. So this, these classifications you'll, should all show up in your audit, and it's just um, I take these numbers and I put them directly into this that that thing I showed you earlier. So restricted are amounts constrained to being used for a specific purpose by external parties, constitutional provisions, or enabling le legislation. As I talked about on the previous slide, this is where your debt service would go. This is where your um, any bond issues go, your sinking funds. So that money is pretty much, you have to pay that stuff. So that's why it's, that's why we subtracted on that one calculation just to kind of give us a better idea. So then we have committed, um, committed funds are for a specific purpose by formal action of board at the Board of Education. Constraint can only be removed or changed by the same action. An action should occur prior to June 30th. So an example of that is a board created fund. So if, a, if the board creates a recreation fund for whatever reason, that's considered a committed fund. And you have to have that amount um, like commit, or committed before the June 30th part. Now if you, have, if you commit it and you don't have the exact amount, you can subsequently change the amount, but you have to create the fund prior to June 30th for it to be in that audit. So, okay, next. Okay, next we have assigned, which uh, assigned is amounts intended to be used for specific purposes. This intent is expressed by the governing bodies or authorized official. So this is uh, an example of what um, anything that's been budgeted, appropriated funds are classified as this. So when you budget something, it's considered assigned. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, assigned. And then unassigned or is available for any other purpose. So your general fund is what is unassigned, anything that's not accounted for. So it's pretty pretty broad what, can, what that can be used for. The only stipulation of that is negative fund balances and other governmental funds are reported as unassigned as well. So, okay, next, I took those two ratios that were on that page and uh, I broke them down a little bit. So. The current ratio, which is current assets over current liabilities, this is a this ratio will give a, an, us an understanding of how capable the academy is of paying off its obligations. So a ratio under one suggests that the academy would be unable to pay off its obligations if they became due at that point. So we take this number, we kind of compare it. Now it doesn't mean that you you can't recover or you're bankrupt or anything. It just means that you know it's just an indicator of 
what direction you're heading financially. So then the debt to asset ratio, this one down here, which is total liabilities over total assets. This one's kind of the opposite, so it's kind of confusing sometimes, but the uh, a debt to asset ratio of greater than one indicates the academy has more debt than assets. Meanwhile, a debt to ratio of less than one indicates that the academy has more assets than debt. So when liabilities on, is on top, you want liabilities to be smaller, so if this, this is smaller, and this is bigger, this should be a below one. So you want that to be below one. So uh, many of our schools have different management financial approaches. So these, these kind of ratios and that fund balance over revenues is kind of, a, kind of one of the way, ways we kind of compare and gauge our schools against each other and you know, just to compare them. So that's why we use those. So um, this portion of the document provides details of the budget, enrollment, and numeric representation of debt. This information is directly from the audit and provides very good summary of the Academy's finances at that time. So I have I put the original budget, final budget, actual budget, so that's the actual thing that happened. And I take this, this little thing just to see the percent change, how, how your budget changed over time, like from the original to the ending. And then your fall enrollment for the last three years, that's right from the state. So I'll talk about that in a second though. Um, and then your operating lease if you rent the building or um, notes payable, estate aid notes, and then this is long-term debt and then management fees. So this portion is on, will be on page two. This is the top of page two. Um, this is the debt section. So this data is put in right from the audit. So I just write in all the debt information, the payment schedule, that kind of stuff, just to give everyone an understanding of <coughs> how the school is standing financially. And then I also give management company details. This stuff comes right from the audit, so I don't like write my own opinion or anything. This is straight from the audit. So uh, this is where the audit findings are recorded. Um, it allows our office to input notes at the bottom as well. So this is where, where I would put notes if there is something that happened because there's a time delay from June 30th to the release of the audit. So the school year ends, the audit um, as of, ends as of June 30th, and then they don't come out till like October 30th is our due date, and the state's is November 14th, 15th. So there's kind of a time delay, so if there's anything that's happened, whether it be good or bad, I put it in there. Any other news from the field reps, it goes in there. So, um, and then a finding is classified as a material weakness, significant deficiency, or a finding related to a federal audit program or a violation of the Uniform Budgeting Act. It is important to address the issue promptly and make changes in policies and procedures to make sure the finding is not repeated in the next audit. And then uh, down here you'll notice that we have a second person review the document so that it try to eliminate any possible error. So this is a state aid um, sheet that I took and I kind of edited it so I took the numbers out. The reason I did that is just for clarification. So um, the new blend, as I hope everyone knows, is 90-10 now, so 90% on the fall and 10% on the spring count. So we're gonna kinda go through the, how those are computed on this thing. First, to compute the total blend, which is represented by the number one up here. So I'll, I have a numbers one on the second one, so. Um, we must add numbers two and five, so two here, five here. So this one plus this one equals one. And then, uh, and then if you want to know how those ones are added, are computed, this supplemental 2011, that one's given the 10%, and this fall 2011 is given the 90%. So those two are added after they're computed, and then that, that's the total of the right here. And then same thing down here. So this is the special education numbers, and this is general education. I have the math on the bottom here. So then on the next one, I took one with the actual numbers. So uh, please note that this 333.39 is right here. So this is the total state aid. So this would be what your total blend is based off of. This is your total blend right here. So if you want to do the math, it's 273.29, which is right here. 0 0.1 because it's the supplemental February amount. And then 336.28 times 0 0.9. So Right here, 336, and that's that comes up to that total, and that which is right here, 329.98, 329.98.
And the same thing right here, 3.41 and 3.41. So this, that's, how, that's how the state aid is computed, and that's how that ratio. So it used to be 75-25, and a lot of people ask, what's the difference between the 90-10 and the 75-25? How is it going to impact the schools? Well, the 90% will give you more of your funding based off of this current year's fall enrollment. So if you had an, if you had an upward, upward enrollment, then you're going to be in better shape than you would have previously because 90% of your state aid is going to be based off of this current year, which has increased from last year. However, if you've gone down, then you're going to get a decline in your payment because that 90% is going to be harder, like, decrease than it would have been if it was only 75%. So that's how you that's how you kind of justify that. Okay, um, if you, hopefully you have you've seen a state aid payment. This would be the center of it. So this is the breakdown of all of the state aid payments. Um, this should help in budgeting, you know, from year to year. This will tell you like how every payment is broken down, and then the subtotals. And this is it's also important to look at these because. If there's any deducts for any reason and you weren't aware of it, you want to keep on top of that. So if there's ever a deduct for whatever whatever reason, because the audit came out and your enrollment numbers weren't just, weren't what you thought they were, that kind of stuff, it, it will be reflected on here and you can kind of inquire about it. So then this is the bottom of the state aid report. This should show all of your payments throughout the throughout the year, starting in October, and then uh, you can kind of see the fluctuations. And if you review those year to year, it should be able to give you a little bit of a, a budgeting idea of what you can deal with based on what your enrollment is. Depending on if the state fluctuates their funding, you've got to take that in consideration as well. So one other thing that goes along with the state aid, that was the numbers portion of it. There's also a, an informative um, written part of it, and that's what this is. This is, this is a sample. This is actually from this year, this April's. Um, so this is, I have all these URLs at the end of the presentations document thing that you should have. Um, and this kind of gives an update on all of the, the payment stuff. And then it also gives house recommendations for fiscal year 12, 13, school aid. So this gives you an update on stuff that's going on in charter school industry. So this is, this is a pretty good website that you're, you might want to look at monthly almost just to keep on top of things. It's pretty good. So, and then this would be, this is page two. And I added this one just to show that all those, all those numbers in the middle there, they're all classified down here, like 31A at-risk funding is 293.03 per pupil. So if you ever wanna know what that funding is based off of, this, this state aid update will provide you with all the details from where those numbers come from. So if you wanna go back and pick through all the numbers, you, you can. Okay, so enrollment. So we talked about in bl blended enrollment using these numbers, adding them up differently. So another form of enrollment is just the fall counts and the spring counts, which the 90, 10 are based off of. So, so this is the state aid report. And if you notice, I have this blue highlight here coming up here, and then this blue highlight coming up here, and then I have 39.50 and then 278.41. So these are the actual, this would be the supplemental number total, and this would be the fall total. So I'll. Sh we're going to compare that to the uh, MEIS, MSDS, Fall FD, DS4061. So those are submitted on pay revision. They're due by November 16th. That should be like the unaudited version of the fall enrollment number. So that that's put in pay revision. And then usually I compare those to the uh, state aid reports. They're usually pretty similar. They re they uh, usually off by like one or two students occasionally, but they're usually pretty consistent. So here's the math we did earlier, the 333.39. Um, this all blends. So the fall count is, I have it down here in this bluish color to try to match up here. So it's computed by, by the 336.28, which is right here for the fall 2011, 336.28. And then it's added a 3.22, which is the fall 2011 special ed number. So that's how we get our fall count. So that, that will be computed and compared to the DS4061 form. So similarly, if you wanted to compare your uh, your supplemental numbers, you could add here and add here. And it's just nice to compare because this would be the previous number and this would be the newest number. So, so then I took this school that I used for this example and uh, 
This is the, the cutoff part of that, that DS4061 form. And I compared it to the state aid numbers that we just looked at. And this one's 339.50, and this one's 340.51. So it's off by 1.01. So based on seat time and enrollment stuff, so after they do their audit, it's usually pretty similar, but very close. And then if you go back to when I had those numbers referenced way earlier in the presentation, this would be the number four and number seven would be where you get those fall enrollment numbers from. And then as Dr. Shannon spoke about earlier, um, long-term financing has changed to transactions longer than one year and greater than $150,000. I was going through copy machines and computers and laptops and stuff and um, we kind of matched up with the other authorizers and so this should be reflected in the new charters. Um, and then when you're submitting those documents, the long-term financing requests, you have to have those submitted 30 days before the next college board meeting so that there's time to review it and then we can get it on the agenda and uh, get that taken care of. Um, as Dr. Shan also said, review and understand all your lease agreements entirely and include the interest payment in the budgeting because when I was getting those copy machines and stuff, they were, I was asking some of those people, are you including the interest payments in your budgeting? They're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. So you got to kind of keep that in mind when you're budgeting for these things that there's interest, not just the principal payment. Um, that section that deals with long-term financing is section 3.110 3, 3 in the charter contract. So if you ever need to review it, that's the section. Um, and then always include your board legal counsel in this. So pretty important. The document that you fill out is available on our website. So you go to charter schools then come over here to announcements and then it's right right here on your financing. So that's a three page document that you're just going to have to fill out and uh, submit it to our office and we can go from there with that transaction. See if there's any conflicts of interest, any anything that needs to be taken care of or anything beforehand. This is the uh, list of URLs I have provided throughout this, used throughout this presentation. So the first one is that state aid report, that's the numbers version. So those come out monthly to disperse the state aid. State aid update is the written portion. So this is the one that's really important to read. It has all the updates with legislation. It explains the state aid and it just has charter school news in it. So it's pretty good to read. This, this annual audits page, this is where I get the annual audits from the state. So the, the audits are submitted to paper vision and I check those and make sure those are all in, in compliance and then I compare them to the audits received by the state. They usually always match up, but it's just good to check it. And if you, when you submit yours to the state, if you want to check if yours is there, this is the website you would use to check that it's there. And then podcast, this is the board gear website. And then this is the long-term financing URL. So thank you again and uh, hope everyone has safe travels and are there any questions? Also I'm available if your school has a, a question about the uh, insurance certificates. I brought my paperwork so I can talk, answer any questions about that as well. So if there's any issues with that, I have that stuff too.